Okay. So what you're going to do is here's an example of what your ISN is going to look like. I already showed you what page that is. You should cut this around on 22 to 29. I actually don't have any glue sticks. I think I have two pieces of tape going around. So you're going to be responsible for gluing this into your ISN. You might have to do it at home. When a tape goes by, you might see it. But we're starting on page one and two. The next thing is going to be a little bit different too. Yeah, you can do it in the same book. I'm going to put a bigger emphasis on vocabulary this second semester. So, which each unit, we're going to start with pages dedicated to vocabulary. It might change a little bit because I've not done this before. But right now it's two pages. Okay. So page three and seven, three and four, sorry, are both going to be titled Unit 7 Vocabulary. And what I want you guys to do is make this and then copy down Unit 7, uh, unit seven Vocabulary. That's just three words right now. Copy this down. All right, there's four new vocabulary words. The first one's not really a word. It's more of a, like a action you do. It says rationalize in the denominator. Rationalize in the denominator is getting rid of the radical that is in the denominator. All the radicals are in the denominator. So, for example, if we have something that looks like this, 3 over square root of 5, we would be getting rid of... We would be getting, we would be getting rid of radical 5. Okay. Why do we want to do that? Well, we know how in English class you have like incomplete sentences or sentences that are in the right form. Same idea. This is like incomplete. This is not the right form you want this in. Okay. Well, what's a radical? A radical is another word for square root. You'll hear me often call it radical. I almost will never call it square root unless I'm talking to students. And sometimes even then I won't say it. So how would I say this? 3 over radical 5. I would probably not say it 3 over square root of 5. Numerator and denominator. You should both know what a numerator and denominator. You should know both of these. Numerator is the number on top. That's numerator. Denominator is the number on the bottom. So rationalizing the denominator. You're getting rid of the radical on the bottom. People are still writing. Next page we're going to go to is five. Ready? Okay. So, on page five, we're going to write steps to steps to rationalizing the denominator. What I want you guys to do is write these down, and I want you guys to either highlight or underline the new vocabulary words we learned. I'm going to give you guys about four minutes to do that. Steps to rationalize in the denominator. We have a few new, wait, we have new vocabulary words. This was a vocab word. Shh. Do not talk over me. This was vocab. This was vocab. Numerator and denominator. Oh, and radical. Those are all no, vo no vocabulary words. Rationalizing the denominator is pretty simple. The first step you need to do is you need to identify a radical. So what did we do? Five. We'll just do five times the square root of, or divide by square root of three. Identify the radical in the denominator. What's the radical in the denominator? Nope. Square root 3. So, we identified it. We know it's square root of 3. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by the radical. We're going to take 5 times the square root of 3, or divide by square root of 3, I'm sorry, times square root 3 divided by square root 3. It's not that bad. Just wait a second. Okay, first question. Who thinks they're super duper smart?
We could ca we could cancel this out, yes. And if we cancel this out, the problem is we get 5 over radical 3, yes. which is the same thing, which is what we don't want. So who knows why we can actually multiply both tops and bottoms by square root of 3? Mm, no. What's square root of 3 divided by square root 3? 1. What's 1 times anything? Itself. You are always allowed to multiply any number by 1. But we're multiplying this by a fancy 1, right? By radical 3 divided by radical 3. How do you do this? Well, there's really one rule to multiplying radicals. The first rule is, we're going to look at the bottom. If you're multiplying two radicals together, so I'm going to do it kind of here. If you're multiplying two radicals together, you combine them like this. You combine both of them under the radical. If you're multiplying a radical by a non-radical, you do not combine them under the radical. So this would be 5 times square root of 3. You don't combine them at all. They're two different types of numbers. Okay. We multiply the top and the bottom by the radical. Last step is a simplify. 5 times square root of 3, well, that's a radical and a non-radical, so that just stays the same. You leave it 5 times the square root of 3 divided by, well, what's, remember, these are combined underneath the radical. What's 3 times 3? Square root of 9. Is that as simple as it can get? No. And <coughs> the whole point of this was to get rid of the radical on the bottom, right? Well, is 9, what's square root of 9? 3. So we have 5 times the square root of 3 divided by 3. That is the final simplified answer. Do you think it's a coincidence that we ended with 3 on the bottom and we had a 3 on the bottom over here? Mm -mm, there's, a, there's a pattern to these. I'm not going to tell you what the pattern is. You have to figure it out on your own. But there is a pattern to it. Okay. Let's look at our homeworks. The homework you wrote in the calendar. Hmm? Oh, no. I was trying to stretch my back. Okay. This says, solve the first 15 perfect square roots. First 15 perfect square roots. What's a perfect square root? A perfect square root is a square root that has a whole number. So, what's the square root of 25? Same as 5 times 5. So we have 5. This one would be the same as 3 times 3. So that's 3. I, do we need to do more of these, or do you guys got these? Okay. I'm going to move on. Forty-nine and seven. Okay. Let's look at this. We have A B. A B. All right. It says find each find each ratio and rationalize the denominator when possible. A B is one. A C is two. Is one over two? Is that our final answer? Do we need to rationalize anything? Yes, that is our answer. No, we don't need to rationalize. 
Two is not a radical. You only need to rationalize if you have a radical on the bottom. If that was square root of two, then you, you would have to do it. So just one over two, that's it. Let's look at this one. AB, AB is one. CB is square root of three. Uh-oh. We got to rationalize it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Close. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's going on, guys? Okay, going to multiply both by the radical on the bottom. Multiply both by square root of 3. 1 times square root of 3. We don't combine them because they're, neither of those are radicals. Or right, that's a radical, that one's not. These are both radicals, so we can combine them underneath the radical sign. We end up getting 1 times square root of 3 is just square root of 3 over square root of 9. Square root of 3 over 3 is the answer. No, but you shouldn't. You should drop the one. Okay. Let's look at C. Let's look at this one. BC is square root of 3. AC is 2. Do we need, do we need to rationalize this? No, because the radical is on the top. You only need to rationalize if the radical is on the bottom. This is the final answer. We're done. Okay? Let's do one more. EF. EF is 1. DF is square root of 2. Is that, the pro is that the proper answer? Nope, we still need to rationalize it. So I'm going to multiply both by the square root of 2. 1 times the square root of 2. And since these are both radicals, you're going to have square root of 2 times square root of 2. Simplifies to be square root of 2 over square root of 4. Square root of 4 is a perfect square, right? You will always get a perfect square on the bottom. If you rationalize it correctly, it will always be a perfect square root, sorry. Square root of 2 over 2. Alright, I'm going to do one more thing and then we're done. All right, let's look at something like this. Okay. I'm going to solve this all really quickly using the pattern. The answer to this one is 3 over square root 2 over 2. This one is 2 square root 3 over 3. This one is 5 square root 6 over 6. That's my last hint at what the pattern is. So if you have x over square root y, okay, the pattern is going to be x times square root y over Hmm? If you don't, if you can't figure out the pattern, that's okay. It's not a big deal. I'm just showing you that there is one. All right.